Good evening. The subject first came up this week at that GOP debate. HPV, the virus that can cause cancer. It's spread by sexual activity, but it can be prevented by a vaccine, but only if it's given to young people before it's too late. It was a political issue in the state of Texas because Governor Perry, now a presidential candidate, said all young girls in the state should have the vaccine. But people are now speaking up about the medical issue and an aspect of it that often isn't talked about because in part of the mode of transmission, the high rate of head and neck cancers from this same virus, a form of cancer that kills roughly one American every hour. Our chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman, is here in the studio to start us off tonight. Nancy, good evening. Good evening, Brian. It is the virus a lot of women know causes cancer of the cervix, but what a lot of women, in fact, most doctors don't know, is that this is also linked to other cancers, deadly cancers, and they're on the rise, and most people don't even know that they are at risk. Ready? Kelly Seipert never envisioned herself as anything but healthy. A mother of three who eats well, exercises, and has never smoked, the diagnosis of cancer of the tonsil came as a shock. I didn't have any symptoms. That's the scary thing about this. I didn't have the typical sore throat or anything in my mouth that raised a red flag. But Kelly now joins the ranks of what many cancer doctors see as an alarming trend. Cancers of the mouth and throat that are directly linked to exposure to HPV, the human papillomavirus, the same virus that is known to cause cancer of the cervix. Unlike the patients we saw a decade ago that were 60 or 70 years old, the patients we see now are actually much younger. These patients are typically in their late 30s and their early 40s. The numbers are staggering. Experts predict that in 2011 there will be 45,000 new cases of head and neck cancer. More than a third of those will be linked to HPV infection, which is mainly transmitted by oral sex. And the symptoms can be so subtle that they may be missed at first. Sore throat, a lump in the neck, difficulty swallowing, even an earache. For Kelly, the treatment has been tough. Seven rounds of chemotherapy, 35 doses of radiation. The radiation um, took away my ability to talk, swallow, and eat. In fact, I didn't eat for probably about eight months. While there is no known cure for adults who have been exposed to the virus, children can be protected by vaccination. The CDC recommends that children get their shots when they are 11 or 12 before they become sexually active. We talk to patients about vaccinating their children. I'm talking about vaccinating boys and girls. <laughs> Kelly says she is taking no chances. I love my children, and I know what I went through, and it was excruciating. So there's a vaccine out there that's been tested that has positive results. I think it's my duty to them to protect them against HPV. I want to underscore that while those signs of oral cancer can be subtle, it's the symptoms that last for longer than two weeks that warrant a visit to your doctor. And Brian, a reminder that over 35 million doses of this vaccine have been given. It is safe, it's effective, and it is endorsed by a lot of medical bodies. Very important story for us to do, Nancy. Thanks for being here.